Hello and welcome back. I am Chris with Marksman Shooting Sports in Westfield, Indiana, and you are watching Marksman TV. Welcome back to this week's gun store vlog. Now, I'm not going to be doing any type of inventory stuff. I know I was gone all last week. I was fighting really bad allergies, so I didn't really feel up to filming any videos last week. Uh, we did get a lot of used stuff in, but all of that's pretty much sold, so I don't really have anything worth showing you this week. But uh, I do want to focus on the question of the week this week. I think it's an important one that I've kind of wanted to talk about for a while, and I think this is a good opportunity. Uh, first of all, guys, I did partner up with Gunpowder Tees. They do make t-shirts. This is one that I got from them. Now, all the shirts that I'm going to be wearing in my vlogs and sort of promoting them are shirts that I have bought with my own money. They did give me a discount code to buy them, but I did not use it. Uh, just to show you guys that I only want to start sort of promoting products that I personally would use. They sent me a, a, a free t-shirt about a month and a half ago and I've been wearing that. I really like the product so I ordered some more. Anyway, if you want to go check them out, gunpowdertees.com. Use my affiliate code MarksmanTV and get 10% off your order. Plus, it helps me out on the channel a little bit. So with that commercial out of the way, let's go ahead and jump straight into the question of the week. The question of the week was sort of inspired. I was browsing the internet. Of course, we've had some events going on and I'm going to use the term event uh, because of YouTube's policies where you can't talk about certain things if you're a lowly YouTuber like myself and not some sort of big news network. So, uh, kind of going in congruence with that sort of discrimination, I'm going to use the word event and sort of be subtle about what I'm talking about here, although you guys fully know what I'm talking about. I was watching some YouTube videos and one of them from a Coda Boy 32 came up with the question of, should we start sending children to school with body armor and should we start arming teachers? Now, I think that this is a debate that's been going on for a while, given the culture in the United States as of late, and I think I sort of have a, I'm going to take the perspective of a gun store owner because, of course, these products and programs and things like that are going to be things that people are going to have to come to a gun store to buy. And should gun stores be stocking body armor for children or offering teacher discounts for arming schools and things like that? And I think that's a really interesting point of conversation. So I watched his video and he sort of left it with the question. I don't like and putting clips from other YouTubers' videos of which I would agree or disagree with without the full context or without them being on their channel to defend their point. He didn't really make a point in one way or the other. He really explained his own experience as being a parent and they did have an incident at their school where nobody was hurt, where a, uh, where a an item was brought into the school <laughs> and uh, you know, it, more of like a showing off sort of thing to friends. And it kind of created the question in his mind, is that sort of something I should be thinking about? And he passed that question on to his viewers. And so I'm gonna be sort of discussing that sort of from a devil's advocate, sort of both sides of the, of the equation there when we're talking about that sort of thing. Now, furthermore, I am also in a unique scenario in a few ways. One is I own and operate a gun store, obviously. So I sell firearms to make a living. Uh, two is I am a parent of a young boy, so you know he's not quite in grade school yet, but he will be soon, but I do have to drop him off at daycare every day. Uh, three, my wife is a teacher. And four is we did have a, a uh, incident uh, at a, a school locally here where a child did bring an item into the school and used it to harm another student who fortunately did not die. But that was a local community sort of thing and that sort of hits home. So sort of going from that, I want to talk about this point. First and foremost, when we're talking about events happening inside of schools, it is a very, very rare, still a very rare phenomenon. We talk about the amount of uh, children who are killed uh, inside these events inside of schools since uh, the tragic event that happened in 1999 in Colorado. Um, if we talk about the amount of children who are directly affected by that or lose their lives, it's roughly on the average of about 10 to 20 a year, which if we look at in terms of a population of 350 million, of which I think there's about 120 million attending schools every year. Again, don't quote me on these figures. It's stuff I've read about in the past. I'm not really remembering it. I don't have you know statistics or data right in front of me, so take that to, to mind as I speak. But the let's just if we're just looking at the overall risk factor, even if your child is in a school when an event like that is occurring, like the one most recently in Colorado or even uh, last year in Florida, even if they are present during that event, their odds of being harmed in that event are less than 1%. If you look at the entire 
uh, population of that school. If you're looking nationally, you know, the 100 million kids inside of a school when, you know, five or 10 or 20 perish in these events, uh, you know, again, if you look at the statistical likelihood that your child could be caught up in one of those events, it is mind-bogglingly low, that's a word. Um, whereas their risk of being harmed on their way to school in a traffic accident or even something as stupid as you know kids being killed in sports you know contact sports like football or even basketball or things like that i mean that that happens every year at almost the same rate um you really have to put in perspective that it is a tremendously low likelihood that it'll ever happen to you or your loved one or your family with that being said, it is an, an incredibly emotional um, incidence when you, I mean, again, I as a parent and other parents can relate that if you picture getting that phone call or going to your local school where your children are and not knowing for those two or three or four horrific hours what's going on or if your child is okay, uh, and even being one of the parents that has to go to the separate room where they have to be told the the worst news of their life that they would never want to hear and basically have their nightmares realized. If you picture for a moment what it would be like to be in the shoes of those parents, you can really relate to how awful and terrible that that would be. And it's weird and you know, you put your, your yourself in the perspective of a parent in that situation versus a parent of a teenager where the cops knock on the door and say, hey, you know, your child was in a traffic accident and they're, we need you to come identify the body. The outcome is the same, yet one of them appeals to an emotional level on a higher, much higher degree for some reason. I think it's just, it's a more of a horrific thing of knowing that something's occurring and you as a parent can't be there to be protective. And I think that's a very emotionally damaging thing. But again, we have to realize the likelihood of that ever happening is tremendously low. And again, those feelings are exactly that, they are feelings. And I'm not trying to belittle those feelings, but again, you have to sort of separate yourself from the emotional uh, side of it. So when it comes to purchasing products or using different types of, and this is, this is again, this is an interesting point of debate, I think. When you're talking about hardening schools, putting in security or police, metal detectors, arming teachers, children using body armor, you also, from that same standpoint, have to realize that the likelihood of something happening inside that school is tremendously low, tremendously low. Um, and when you are when you are heightening the culture, so you're heightening students and, or teachers being armed or armed security or armed police or metal detectors, if, are you heightening that culture, creating a sense of anxiety inside the school for a very insignificantly low occurrence reason? And it's the same with body armor for children. If you go and you purchase you know, level three body armor or something like that and put it in their backpack. Obviously the child is gonna know that that is there. And are you going to have that conversation is by the fact that you're having to put that body armor in the child's backpack and explain to the child why the body armor is in the backpack or maybe you don't tell them. Um, it's almost like the child then realizes I have to have this here because the chances of this happening are really, really high. And then it creates that sense of, you know, that, that over heightened sense of risk. Uh, within the child that, you know, I have to carry this because the likelihood of something like this happening is incredibly high. And as gun owners and people in the gun community, we always say, you know, don't have the knee-jerk reaction. You want to ban firearms, but you're having an emotional reaction to this. It's not the firearms, it's the mental health, you know, this and that and the other. So is it also equally reactionary to then say, okay, we need to arm teachers and put body armor in backpacks and things like that? Now, that's the question. I'm not taking a, a position on that now, but let's talk about the devil's advocate of that. Even though there's a likelihood of something happening and the likelihood is very small, does that mean you shouldn't be prepared for that likelihood? And that question comes into arming teachers or putting body armor in your children's backpacks. So if you take the position that I stated before where it's, it's an overreactionary, don't arm the teachers, don't put body armor in the backpack um, because something likely won't happen. I mean, something, we can just say statistically, something won't happen. Statistically, it'll be an, an anomaly if it does. But what if that anomaly, anomaly, what if that anomaly happens? Uh, what if that does happen to your child and body armor in the backpack would have saved the child or a teacher being armed would have saved multiple children, including your own? Where would your stance on that be? And that question also comes to the children of uh, our parents of children that have been affected by these directly, these incidents. Um, 
do we take less of an understanding when they say, okay, we want you know, firearms to be banned or anything like that? Because of course they were directly uh, affected in that sort of scenario happening. Now there's also, also the question of there's the event that takes place. Now what was the cause of the event? Okay, a lot of people would argue it's the firearms fault. A lot of people would argue it's mental health's fault. I of course fall into more of it's, it's, an, it's a mental health issue. Because um, when th there's an issue, there's sort of a two part issue here. There's, there's the number one issue, and this is in my opinion, is we have at, an, at a, I shouldn't say alarming rate, but we have at a growing rate, um, young people who decide that they want to kill people, okay? That, that supersedes the action of killing people, is their decision to want to kill people. The decision is made separate from whether they own guns or not. You know, in the case of the event that happened in, in uh, Colorado in 1999, um, it's very clear from their sort of manifestos and journals that the desire was there before the ownership of the firearms was there. The ownership of the firearms was a, a sorting out of a method in which to complete their desire to kill people. And so we have young people, especially young men at this point in time that have that desire. And whether you take away the implement or not, the desire is still there. And in my opinion, that's the troubling thing. That's the thing we have to get to the root of. Because if the tool or the implement, whether it's a firearm, a bomb, a car, or anything like that, the desire to use those items to end other people's lives is supersedes the use of those items. So what can we do as a society or a culture to stop that? And then, you know, figuring out, you know, from there that the use of those items in tragic events will be less likely is, is sort of the obvious approach to these things. So bringing this around to being a gun store owner, what should we do in terms of stocking sort of, you know, different things? Well, my job as a gun store owner and also fiscally my responsibility as a business owner is to stock things that sell. As of now, I don't have really anybody coming in asking me for body armor for backpacks or anything like that. If I start getting that as a normal request, then that will be the deciding factor for me of whether or not I want to stock those things. It is not my position as a retailer to morally arbitrate what the parent should or should not purchase for their children. That doesn't really matter or for themselves. So if that demand is there, parents want to put body armor in children's backpacks, the demand for that grows, I'm going to stock those items so that people can purchase them from me. If it creates a sense of security with them, that's totally fine. Again, it's not my position to say which is morally right or not. The next is a question of arming teachers. And I've always said this, my wife is a teacher. She's incredibly responsible. She's very well proficient with a firearm. And I personally would feel comfortable if she were able to keep a firearm at work. And I know for a fact, I know my wife, she would put her life in front of all of her students every single year. And any teachers who are watching this, you understand it's a very visceral feeling. It's almost like a, a it's a kind of a, when you leave your, your children with teachers, they really do take that sort of parental approach. They care so heavily uh, for those students. It's not just my wife. I know a lot of her friends feel the exact same way. So allowing my wife to have the means to better and equally protect herself in situations like that, I think is incredibly important. I know in their school, they had talked about, they run like canned food drives and they, they put canned food in all the classrooms as a means of self-defense, which is really sad and scary to think about. You know, again, is that reactionary to put firearms in a classroom for the likelihood of that classroom ever being assaulted is tremendously low. And are you increasing the risk of something happening by a teacher who is not very uh, proficient or, um, you know, not very, uh, what should I say, uh, at least uh, responsible enough to be able to use that power. Uh, don't keep it well maintained or locked and then a children who otherwise would not have had access to a firearm gets access to a firearm. Uh, those are all sort of questions you have to deliberate against. I know in Florida they just passed a resolution allowing teachers who receive, I think it's, and again, I don't have this information in front of me, but I think it's like 60 hours of training and instruction. There's a certain way that they have to store their firearms within the school. I think that that's a great idea. I think it's at least worth a try because we do know in a lot of these instances when these perpetrators are confronted, one of two things happen, they give up or they off themselves, you know, essentially. Um, so, being able to get resistance in the way sooner, would that lead to more lives saved? I think it would in the events of this sort of thing happening. 
Again, I don't think that that can be the only solution. I think we have to look at the root cause of why young people are wanting to so all of a sudden get in the way of um, harming other people in their classroom and things like that. Uh, I also think another great way to avoid this would be to stop naming people and publicizing their work on the national news. I think that that would go a long way too. But backing up, as a gun store, for example, if my wife's school decided to allow arming of trained proficient and responsible teachers like as us in our school I would I would even be willing to sell those firearms like if the school said okay we need an order of 20 firearms and the, the teachers have to use their own money which I know teachers don't really make a lot I know that firsthand uh, for the work that they do I mean I would uh, try and figure out something to sell all of those at least at cost to uh, sort of incentivize and, and safes and things like that to go along with it so a sort of a unique I'm sort of in a unique position owning a gun store where there is this issue and what can we do to provide uh, an alternative or an option that customers want while still I mean I can't do things that lose me money so I can't stock a whole bunch of body armor if nobody wants it and if people want it I'm gonna stock it uh, despite what my own inclinations of whether that's beneficial or harmful harmful to the child so I know I'm rambling on this and I knew that this question of the week would sort of take up a majority of the time, which again is why I'm not doing inventory stuff. But I'm going to leave it there. There's sort of, it's a multifaceted, very interesting conversation that I know the nation is having. I wanted to weigh in on my two cents on that. And again, let me guys, guys, let me know down in the comment section what you think. And if you were a gun store, what are your thoughts on this about what you stock and don't stock? And do you take a moral objection or a moral stance on whether or not people or whether you stock certain things or what people should or should not buy or if people should or should not put body armor in children's backpacks, if that's a healthy or helpful uh, solution or if it's not. So anyway, I just, like I said, Coda Boy 32 put out this question. I'm gonna pass this question on to you guys as well and sort of leave like I have left my two cents in there. Anyway, sorry for all the rambling. I'm gonna leave you guys there. Uh, if you have any questions, leave those down in the comment sections or you can email me directly. Email is in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know by hitting a like button and also hit that subscribe button if you want to see more gun store vlogs like this and hit that bell notification. I'm going to leave you there. I am Chris with Marksman Shooting Sports in Westfield, Indiana. You are watching Marksman TV and I will see you next time.